Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and in this tutorial we're gonna cover a bit on data type conversion and just because this video wouldn't be long enough because it's not that material I'll just show you some neat tricks for formatting your numbers which isn't much so this should be a, uh, a quickie so let's start with data type conversion since that's the base of this video and well we've actually done conversion uh, explicitly and we um, I never really told you so I'll show you that example again uh, so I'll just create a declare a variable here and later what we've done is we take that variable and set it equal to something like that this we'd use the keyword such as C S N G and then inside the parentheses we would type in something like text box uh, whatever the user might type in uh, now, as you can see, this variable is not being converted as it's already a single, but it's converting whatever the user typed in into whatever data type you need it in order to correspond with the data type of the variable. So this variable is a single, so we want to convert this into a single. Not to say that you couldn't make this, you know, a double or or a decimal. You could, you can, you can even go integer if you want. But but it, we still have to convert this from how the how the program will be reading it inside the text field into into an actual number so that this this is called implicit or explicit uh, data type and that's basically the going back and forth so we have implicit make sure I spell all these right explicit conversion and basically that's the use of using things such as these so there's way too many. I won't be able to put all of them out there, but you know, you you get it, right? It's it's just these guys right here. Uh, so I'll get rid of this, and I'll actually keep that up there. And another type of conversion is something that the compiler uh, or the application will do by itself if it needs to and if it can. If it can't it'll crash and we don't want that to happen and that's why we have this try catch you know just just to make sure if any errors happen it can stop it uh, not that it can stop all errors I just want to throw that out there um, there's plenty of errors that try catch can't keep from happening but we don't have to worry about that now we'll learn that with exception handling uh, further down the uh, further down the road so uh, the next type of conversion is narrowing conversion and that's basically if maybe you have a, a decimal number, a number with a decimal, or it's a fraction, and it's being assigned to an integer. So for an example, you can type in, let's actually uh, set this equal to something. Or you know what? Let's change this to an integer. And let's have A equal to C single, and then whatever, whatever we type in then on the label output uh, let's see here we want to print A so as you can see it's going to convert whatever we have to a single but A is an integer so what will happen if we make it a decimal well let's find out so let's run this so if I type in yeah, I have to make sure I typed everything right if I type in 13.8, what happens? Well, we got 14. Now, this is actually different than what we've seen before. Uh, when you're working with integers, uh, just integers, it will always take that first number. But as you can see here, it actually rounded for us. When we go from a single or any kind of decimal data type to any kind of integer data type, it will con um, round it for us. So if we go 13.4, now we get 13, so that's really nice. Uh, so there, there we go. That's a narrowing conversion, and that's basically shortening it. Uh, and the last uh, data type conversion I want to show you is both the val function, which is short for value, and the string function. So let's start with the... You know what? Let's go with the string first. You know what? No, let's keep it like that. No, yeah, I want to go with the string first. So I'll set this as equal to a string and 
So whatever you type in here will be a string as such. And then down here, I would like, hmm, what, what do I want to do? You know what? I'll have to create a new variable called dim equals a underscore conv as we'll have to make that a single. And then down here, a underscore conv will be equal to, and then what we have to type out is val, the function, and then inside there, we put in whatever number we want to convert. So we throw in an A. Now if you remember from the last tutorial, if we just set uh, a string equal to a number, you will end up getting another number plus 48. You're going to get another number because whatever a number the value is as a string does not coincide with a, with a string. So we're going to have to make it a, we're going to have to make it a number. And that's using the val. And basically you can put any kind of string in here. Whoops, I don't know. There you go. And it will convert it into a number for us. And then our output, we will want to make that conv. So at first you won't quite see any changes because it should just come out as the number. So if I type in 133, we get 133. So I can't really prove to you it worked, but but it is. It's It's changing it for us. Uh, actually, allow me to just change this into a string. Uh, I don't know. 100 sheep jumped over the moon. I hope I spelled everything right. I click save and oh wait a minute, I want to change that now. Oh wait, no it won't because whatever I type in it will just so uh, I can just type in zero. It won't matter. I click calculate and now 100 put the, um, was appear, appears there. And the reason is because it keeps doing this until it no longer finds uh, a, a string, a character, that can be converted into a number. As the rest of these are actual letters, it'll know which one is, is a number and which one's not. So if I th threw in like the number 33 right here, and then saved, and then tried this again, I'll just put 0 it's still 100 it never caught the 33 because as soon as it went into this white space right here it it was saying hey this is not a number so I'm cutting it here so it does not continue now the other one I want to show you so I'm gonna now have to make this a single and make this a string and I want to make this a single right here so a conv in order to convert a number into a string what you'll want to do is use the, let's see here, the string, str. So there you go. So now we use the string. It's pretty simple. I, I didn't quite show this one to you in that in that string video tutorial. I think that was the last one. But uh, because I didn't want to do conversions yet. But here it is. So we can type in a right here. So a con string a. So it's whatever you type in single, changing it to a string and it will print that. Okay, so let's do this. So if I type in, let's say, I don't know, 67, well there it is. So it worked. Even though again I can't really show you. But now I'm actually going to show you uh, the difference between a number that's a string and a number that's a number through concatenation. Yep. So I'm going to create another variable up here dim b as single and I'll throw in total right here so now I'm gonna get rid of this and make this b is equal to c single text input two dot text and then we'll have total is equal to a plus b and I'll click save and then label output will be total dot to string. There it is. I'll click save and i um, hoping I got everything correct. I'll probably want total to be single as well. Okay, I think I have everything correct. So this should be proper math. Whoops. There it is. So it's proper math. It adds them together. However, if these are both strings, string, str
string and I want this to be whoops string right there and I want that to be a string as well and I want the final to be a string as well so if, so if we do this let's see what happens if we type in a 5 and 6 now we get 56 well why is that 5 plus 6 is 11 uh, th this can't be right well the reason is because since now that they're uh, strings and not read as numbers it's now concatenating them instead of adding them together so it's just putting them side by side so this is why now another problem might be well what if one of them is a number like this single so I'll change this to a single uh, what will happen there what if I make this you know I'll just keep that as a string what will happen uh, this time around? 5 plus 6 is 11. Well, now it worked. Well, that is because the first one, in Visual Basic is a little different. Be since the first one was being read as a number, it automatic automatically assumed that the second one was a number as well. So it's going, you know what? Let's convert these. So that's what it did for us. So um, so as long as you have one as a number, you should be pretty much all right. However, the reason why I showed this to you is to make sure that each one is, make, make sure each one's properly defined. So I'll want to throw in narrowing conversion. So yeah, don't try what I just did. You don't, you don't ever want to do that. That's just, that's no good. So narrow, narrowing conversion is, I'll just throw in an example. Uh, decimal to integer and the last one I showed you were was the um, val which is string to integer and then the other one was string which led to int to string so that's how you can do that uh, now the last thing I wanted to show you, which is some fancy formatting numbers and whatnot. So I'm gonna make all these numbers. You know what? I can get rid of this now. All of these, and just show you some neat things. So you can actually change the format of how your numbers come out. And how you do this is you put some parentheses here, type in uh, some quotes, and then you type in n, which means a standard number. So if you do this, whoops. Uh, total was not declared. My bad. Make that an A. And I'll type in something like 56. I click calculate and I get 56.00. The reason for this is because the default number of trailing decimals is 2. So what you can do is always change it by putting a 0 or a 1 or a 4 even. So if I do that, if I type in like, whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, 107 we now have four trailing decimals and you can do all sorts of things you can do currency so you use a C there and C4 is a bad idea because that doesn't make sense but I throw in 34.5 and I'll get $34.50 but of course I shouldn't have kept the four there uh, another one is percentages I'll just put a P so if I go F5 and if I type in 1, 1 whole is 100%. So it automatically does that for you. 0.23 will be your 23% and so on. So that's really, really nice. And another one is exponents. So basically, if you have a really big number, so if I threw in, let's say, 34, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I click Calculate, well, now it's going to do that for us, so that's that's really nice. So it gives it scientific notation, basically, with a 3.4. Uh, and that's that's it for the, the 40 no number formatting numbers I wanted to show you. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Nothing too difficult, right? This is, this is pretty easy. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time.